Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a tutorial on capturing asteroids in the Kerbal Space Program. The secret to a simple capture lies on selecting your target appropriately. After launching into your game, go to the tracking center and take a look at the selection of asteroids available to you. You'll want to choose one that's on a collision course with Kerbin, not just passing through its sphere of influence as that may make it harder, but actually on track to hit the planet. This makes it all easier as we don't have to do much more than nudge it slightly sideways to slow it down when the time comes. Alright, so out of those asteroids on course to collide, choose whatever size you like. Remembering that A is the lightest class and E the heaviest, then time warp till it's about two weeks away from entering Kerbin's sphere of influence. By which I mean that this little marker here reads about 14 days. That'll give us plenty of time, or should, at, at least. Okay, now it's time for the rockets. You won't need to build anything especially big. If you've successfully done moon landings, then you can probably use a rocket of similar size, though that depends on what asteroid you've chosen. If it's a D or E, you may want to put a little more thought in. Regardless, I've built in the past few seconds is something that's just about sufficient. Using the new NASA parts, because hey, they're fun to show off. Moving on to the launch pad, things get a little more complicated. First, set the asteroid as your target by going into the map view and clicking on its trajectory. We want to launch into orbit, and ideally, the orbit will be aligned with the trajectory of the asteroid. Say your asteroid is coming down over the poles, we'll want a polar orbit. Or say it's closer to being over the equator, we'll want an equatorial orbit. It's nice to launch straight into the perfect inclination for your mission, but the odds of getting it exact are fairly slim. So with that in mind, you'll likely want to know how to adjust your inclination to match that of the oncoming asteroid. Once you're in orbit, time warp around to one of the two nodes that ought to be generated where our two trajectories cross. We'll want to change the inclination difference to something near 0 or 180 degrees as they're both the same in this instance. If your node is ascending, and you're along the equator, that'll require a burn pointing south to reduce the difference to zero, and north if it's closer to 180. Vice versa for the descending nodes. However, remember that in a more polar orbit, the normal directions are east and west, rather than north and south. And east and west are 90 and 270 degrees on your nav ball. Do some burning and you'll figure it out in no time. Okay, with trajectories pretty much aligned, it's time to go out and meet our little balls of rock. Check when the asteroid is due to enter Kerbin's sphere of influence, and plot a node to burn outwards, directly towards where it's hurtling down from. If there's 13 days left on the clock, you'll want to burn prograde along your orbit. That's marked by the empty yellow circle on the nav ball, by the way. It's a useful little marker, that is. Uh, you want to burn prograde along your orbit till the highest point of your orbit will take you just under 13 days to reach. Say, 12 days and 8 hours or so. What this will do is place us out in deep space at exactly the time and place the asteroid becomes easy to rendezvous with. So, time to rendezvous. Now this is the easy part. Set your nav ball to target mode by clicking a few times on the display to change between the modes, then burn to move your prograde marker over the pink target indicator. This will make us move towards it. We may be moving towards it very fast, but hey, that'll save time. However, it's not a good idea to shoot straight past it, so as we get closer, make sure you occasionally burn to adjust and stay on target. Also, crashing into it at 2 kilometers per second probably has only a slim chance of pushing it onto a capture trajectory. So, manage your speed and stay under 2 or 300 meters per second relative velocity. When you get within 5 kilometers of the rock, slow down to more like 100 meters per second and get ready for docking. Okay, so here's docking in a nutshell. You come close. Use RCS to slow down to a crawl and bring your prograde marker directly over the target marker and slowly, gently, just kinda do that. That tends to work, I, I find. Okay, nearly there now. Congratulations, you are docked! 
You probably aren't, however, oriented correctly to do any asteroid redirecting business yet. Right-click on the asteroid, give it a name, and promise to care for it forever. Do science if you feel like it, and, and then select the target center of mass. Now, right-click on your grabbing arm, unlock the pivot, and gently swing around till your nose and, in turn, engine is pointing right at the pink target marker. Lock the pivot once more, and we're ready for the final stage. There's a great error braking calculator that I'll link in the description to help with this next part, but essentially all you want to do is burn tangentially to Kerbin in the direction your trajectory tends towards the most. I don't know how to say it much more simply than that. It's probably evidence from this footage. At any rate, burn to raise yours and your pet rock's periapsis out from underground and up into the atmosphere, till it's sitting high enough for the atmospheric drag to slow you down into an orbit, but not to deorbit you completely. Again, the calculator will help with this, trust me. Then, enjoy the view! You've captured an asteroid! <sighs> Time to do something with it, I, I suppose. But I'll leave deciding what up to you. I think I might strap wings on mine and try to fly it around. Hmm... If you liked the video, please do like the video. If you weren't already aware, I have Twitter, at HOCGamer, so you can follow that for news and other semi-insightful nonsense. Hopefully I'll be making more, more videos soon. I'd like to try a mailbox kind of thing where I respond to questions sent via Twitter or email both of which are on the screen right now, in a, a sort of question-answer-esque show every week or fortnight. If you'd like to send me a question, please do. It can be anything, anything related to gaming, I think, because I'd like to talk more about my opinions on stuff that's happening rather than just answering random topics. But hey, if it's interesting, you might as well send it my way. And that is all from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.